Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. This is what has been going on the last couple days, and really last couple weeks in El Popo, a very active volcano. It's always active, or at least it has been of uh, recently, but more so the last uh, couple weeks. And this could be tied into the upcoming hurricane season and change the entire hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin and potentially even the Pacific. So huge eruptions here, but that's still nothing like this. Look at this. This is Tonga, so it's an island country to the east of Australia. This here, a Plinian eruption. That is the biggest type. This was just incredible. One of the uh, highest uh, recorded or strongest recorded uh, things of this magnitude on Earth that we have ever had. And you can see this, again, just a massive eruption. This was back in early 2022. And we do believe, and they're still doing research on it, but it did play into that year's hurricane season. So I wanna show you that. I wanna show you that Plinian eruption from that and how it tied into the hurricane season in just a second. Let me get back to El Popo. So again, here's Mexico, Mexico City, Puebla, and here lots of villages as well around. So again, a very, very densely populated area. Now this here, is a shot from space. So we are looking way the heck from above all the way down and we can see it. This is the volcano. This here is the ash. And again, it's been going in different directions. I've been giving you the heads up on that in previous videos. So again, very critical to watch where the ash goes. Ash could be bad, obviously, for breathing issues or gets in your home, all that stuff. Could be good to uh, kind of fertilize some of the uh, soil, uh, so to speak. So there's really a give and take with this, but obviously it is some uh, dangerous stuff. Now, here's a bigger picture of it. This is Mexico. Here's the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the Pacific Ocean. And you can see that plume right there, how big of a plume that is. And again, this is not even a Plinian eruption. So imagine that. Imagine if this, and I, let's hope it's not, uh, but imagine if this were to be a scene like in Tonga and you have this Plinian eruption. Well, that would really change things. And that's what I want to show you. But this here, again, a super densely populated area. Of course, if there's an active volcano near just a few people, uh, that is of high concern. But this here uh, leads to uh, different issues with trying to evacuate people. Of course, a lot of people have different means. It's it's not that easy as getting up and, and going. Uh, I think you can relate to that. You guys have uh, compassionate hearts. Now, where El Popo is right now, what's going on is they have an alert level that's like a traffic light. It's a phase two yellow alert, which means they're taking the precautions for some of the ash and they're ready in case this goes into a, 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 a red alert, which is a possibility. That would mean a lot of action as far as trying to evacuate people. That would most likely mean we are having a massive eruption out of this. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Now, in the history of it, it has happened before, uh, but again, it's not a, not incredibly common, but a very active volcano. Everyone around the area is very aware of it. Now, uh, in the history of El Popo, there's been three Plinian eruptions. Point being, those are the massive ones that get way the heck up there in the atmosphere and can change the weather. And El Popo, just where it is now, how it's been now, that's been delaying and canceling a lot of flights out of multiple airports around. Now, they've been having uh, evacuation drills. They use a lot of the church bells uh, for that. Mexico City, and I've been mentioning some other uh, areas around Mexico City, is just about 80 kilometers or 50 miles away. And overall, in the entire area, we're looking at 25 million people on alert. And again, it's that phase two yellow alert. And we really hope it doesn't get higher than that. But I'm watching that. More on that in some previous videos. But let me shift to Tonga, one of the most explosive volcanoes we've had on record. So there's North America, South America. You get back here. Here's Australia. So here is Tonga. So again, to the east of Australia. And that's where we had this uh, massive eruption in early uh, 2022. Now they're still doing research on how this played into the hurricane season of that year, but you could see why it may do that. Let me show you a couple different things here. Here's the shot that I showed you earlier, the Plinian eruption, and you can see some video out there about this. There's documentaries, all that sort of thing. Uh, several people died, several people went missing, of course. We're always mindful of that and uh, thinking of those and trying to think of others that uh, were dealing with this, but this huge eruption, yeah, there was a, a tsunami with this. There's scenes scenes of that. But this here tells the story. This here is the shot of space. I showed you this shot of space earlier with, with El Popo, right? That was impressive enough. This here, it's even hard to pick out. This, a shot from space, all of this is the ash. So you have that uh, uh, on Earth and again up there in the atmosphere. Well, that's going to change things. And that's exactly what happened, we believe, in 2022. And this is just a sample. This has happened uh, with other volcanoes 
in the past. Now, back in 2022, in the Atlantic Basin, uh, July and August was so unusually quiet. Of course, there were some very destructive hurricanes later in the season, but even in August, there were no named tropical cyclones, not even a tropical storm or a hurricane. That was very rare. That was the first time that happened since 1997. Now, what happens uh, with these types of eruptions, the Plinian eruptions, they do a couple of things. They can stabilize the atmosphere. So where storms would build up, maybe not anymore. So that, that's a possibility. Also, where there's typically storms, they can shift where they are. They could take all the storm tracks and kind of shift them down to the south or north to different locations. So they really change what could happen with the weather. But usually, again, that's out of a Plinian eruption. We had that with uh, uh, Mount St. Helens back in uh, 1980, which did change the weather. That's, that's another example. The Plinian eruptions are the most explosive type. They have the highest ash cloud, massive debris flows, of course. That unfortunately is deadly in many cases. The side of the entire mountain, side of the entire volcano can blow out. And these ash, uh, the ash could lift upwards of 30,000 feet, six miles, or that's 9,000 meters or nine kilometers up. And what happens with these types of volcanoes is uh, you have the kind of thick in uh, uh, a really pasty magma below underground, again, where the volcano is. So things are very thick down there. So the gases stay kind of trapped. They can't crack through, but eventually once the gases build up, then they do crack through in a massive explosion. You get the Plinian eruption, that high ash cloud, and that can impact the weather and a hurricane season for months and months. And I bring that up because we talk about the long-term forecast. And if you look at my video yesterday, I did a long-term forecast, but I also mentioned, while it's initially an easy call that there will be more hurricanes this year, there's other factors. This would be one of them. That's why I wanted to point that out. There's a lot going on out there, of course, and I will do my best to stay on top of it for you. Now, right now, I've been tracking some fronts, getting back to what's going on. Here we go, Central America. Uh, you get toward uh, parts of Central Mexico, and then you get back toward Guatemala. There's been some fires. We've been talking about that. Incredibly large fires back toward the panhandle of Texas. So an earlier start to the wildfire season for some of us, it's been a little bit quieter. We've had some of the Saharan dust around and that's one of the reasons or at least the, the dryness out there and one of the reasons we've had that earlier start to the fire season. So watching volcanoes, fires, and thinking ahead to the upcoming hurricane season always something, but I like to give you the information so you could kind of know exactly what's going on out there. Spotty showers possible today, taking you into the weekend. Again, a hit or miss shower. The rain chance overall is not too high, still having issues with the uh, Panama Canal. Did a video on that about a week ago. The level's still too low and the rain chance stays low. You see, as we work our way into Sunday, not much. Hit or miss shower will be possible. More of the action is to the north. There's been a huge system rolling into the U.S. with winds gusting in the higher terrain over 100 miles per hour. Uh, very uh, uh, crazy stuff out there as far as the, uh, that is concerned. Uh, some snow as well. And then this here, there is a front moving by, but it's almost that time of year where most of the front stay to the north of the Caribbean. It will kind of clip by, but I'll zoom down there in just a second. But you can see the higher terrain snow out here and then still dry in many locations. Even Texas, while we did have some moisture around, uh, it's kind of a break. One system there, another system here. This is as we work our way into Sunday. You can see the system pulling off the east coast of the United States but not much going on in the Caribbean with rain. And then as we pull forward, we'll keep an eye on another system that we'll try to develop early next week near Texas, Louisiana, in northern Mexico. Here's a closer look at the northeast U.S. in the Atlantic region of Canada. We're going to have more of a rainmaker that will be driving in. So this is later this afternoon. You see some of the rain there. Could see a little snow over toward a snowshoe mountain in the higher terrain of West Virginia. But then there we go as we work our way into late tomorrow. You get toward uh, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, uh, New Brunswick. We'll start to see some of the rain leaving New England, moving in. And then just kind of skimming by as we work our way into Sunday near Newfoundland, we could pick up some of the uh, kind of chilly rain showers. Jamaica, our rain chance about 40% today, a 30% chance today in the Cayman Islands. Rain chance stays about 20 to 30%. Tr uh, Trinidad and Tobago through the weekend. Same thing as we work our way into Barbados, although a slightly better chance today. 30% chance of a shower in St. Lucia this weekend. Grenada, we're looking at a 20% chance. And a 20% chance St. Vincent, the Grenadines, still some dust around. 30% chance of a shower in Martinique this weekend. We need some rain. We just don't have a whole lot. Same thing in Dominica. And we work our way back toward Guadeloupe. Need to fill up some of the cisterns. We haven't had so much rain. Guadeloupe. And then moving to the north, get toward Antigua, Barbuda. Rain chance an even 30%. 
and about a 30% chance. St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat, 20 to 30% chance. Anguilla and St. Bart's. And through the weekend, a 30% chance. St. Martin, Saba, and Stasia. Rain chance about 40% today in Puerto Rico. 30% chance tomorrow. And we could get a couple spotty showers. U.S. and British Virgin Islands this weekend. Rain chance about 30% in the Dominican Republic. Mainly dry in Haiti. Can't rule out a couple drops out there. Otherwise, primarily on the dry side. Bahamas, that next front. Northern Bahamas, better chance of a few showers. Turks and Caicos, it stays limited. Limited rain chance in Cuba, it'd be very isolated. 30% chance for tomorrow in Belize and about a 30% chance tomorrow in the Yucatan of Mexico. Rain chance about 20% in Aruba, a 20 to 30% chance in Curacao and Bonaire. And as we pull forward into Bermuda, a little bit drier, not much action going on. Same thing Costa Rica and Panama, mainly dry. Rain chance will pick up a little bit in Guyana by the time uh, we hit later in the weekend, 20 to 30% chance of a shower in Suriname and holding on to about a 20% chance in northern Venezuela. So yes, La Nina is coming back this summer. That usually means a more active hurricane season, more named storms likely, but as I was talking about in this video, there are other variables, some weird stuff too, like the potential of volcanic eruptions that could change a hurricane season. And in the short term, closely monitoring that fire threat. Plus, we had some earthquakes this morning in parts of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Nothing big, but I'm keeping an eye on that. And we are now three months away to the start of hurricane season. Thank you for taking the time to subscribe to this channel. Have a great weekend ahead.